Okay, so hi, hello, good morning, good afternoon, and for some of you, probably also good evening. Welcome at our third day of the conference, and also I, I also welcome you at the third uh, presentation session. For uh, some of you, probably this day is a little bit sad day because uh, we've got the information about the results of, of Kai papers, but I hope there also are people here who are happy about the results, so good for you. For all of you who are a little bit sad because of the results, don't worry. To, 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 today in the evening we are going to have a banquet and then, yeah, we can chill a little bit. Okay, so uh, I guess we are ready to start our first uh, presentation. Uh, and first presentation will be about uh, balancing uh, virtual reality immersion and by standard awareness so um i warmly welcome the authors the presenters and the floor the screen is yours hello everyone i am yoshiki kudo from tohoku university japan today i will talk about our research towards balancing VR immersion and bystander awareness this is work done with anthony tan Kazuyuki Fujita, Isamu Endo, Kazuki Takashima, and Yoshifumi Kitamura. VR headsets are increasingly becoming common devices. Headsets allow us to experience content and information through a free immersive VR experience. Because HMDs are relatively inexpensive and easy to buy, they are being introduced in various places, such as home, school, office, museum, and so on. But VR headset use is problematic in public spaces because they create a disconnect between the physical and virtual world. We call this HMD boundary. For instance, a headset user may cry with bystander since he does not notice the bystander's presence. In the physical world, we can smoothly transition in and out of interaction. But this is much more cumbersome when interacting with a headset user. The headset user cannot anticipate the bystander's presence or intentions. These problems occur because the headset disconnects the physical world and virtual world. Without headsets, we can see bystanders and hear sounds caused by them. We use this information to build informal awareness and this enables us to know who is around and available for interaction. By tracking such information, we maintain an awareness of the presence of others and we can loosely understand what others' intentions in the space are. Headset users cannot track such information. They don't know when bystanders are present and cannot predict what they will do. To solve this HMD boundary issue, we need to provide such information to the headset user and enable headset user to maintain informal awareness. This lack of informal awareness is what we tackle here. In this research, we explore how to we design informal awareness cues that balance immersion. The idea is that VR headset users can see these cues and be aware of those around those around them without being too distracted from their VR experience. Our approach was to appropriate existing visualization cues that provide awareness and to evaluate them through a combined simulation and user hybrid study. Here are the three we created, each of which focuses on showing presence, location, and orientation of bystanders around the headset user which are basic informal awareness elements. I'll describe each design now. First, I'll show you avatar view. The left bottom window shows top view around the headset user in physical world. The right window shows headset user's view. The avatar represents bystanders with a spherical head and nose, and their position in the virtual environment maps one to one to the bystander's location in the physical space and the avatar's nose orientation maps one-to-one -to, -one to the bystander's head orientation. This approach provides a high level of accuracy and is more familiar to users in the sense that it is similar to how real-world inform informal awareness cues are gathered. Next, here is a radar widget. This type of widget is used in many games. 
Here, the radar widget gives a top-down view of the physical space that shows bystanders with blue arrows. The radar is centered around the headset user's location and head orientation, and the bystander arrows are visualized relative to this. Thus, as the headset user steps forward or turn to the right, a bystander in the radar widget would appear to move and circle around the headset user. Finally, here is a Presence++ plus plus widget. It provides awareness information through icons. The, eye, the eyes of the icon are mapped to the relative orientation of the bystander to the headset user. An icon that has eyes means the bystander is looking towards the headset user. An icon without eyes means the bystander is looking away from the headset user. The icon has two sizes. When a bystander enters the tracking space, the icon is small. When the bystanders enter the HMD user's play area, the icon becomes large. We designed a study to evaluate these awareness visualizations. In our hybrid simulation user study, we explored whether the cues sufficiently balanced the informal awareness of the physical environment with the immersion in the virtual experience for the headset user. Participants were asked to experience three different VR experiences and the three visualization cues in this study. To evaluate the visualization cues, we prepared eight simulated bystander scenarios, where different numbers of bystanders wandered through the physical environment and sometimes wanted to talk with the headset user. <coughs> Here, we see three VR experiences, each of which vary in terms of interactivity. In the first-person shooter game, we ask the participants to shoot enemies which float around the headset user as much as possible during the game. This is highly interactive. In the drawing experience, we ask participants to draw freely based on a theme, for example, flower. In the 360 movie, we ask participants to watch several scenic environments played as a movie and ask participants which scenery was most preferred. This is mostly a passive experience. While engaged with the VR experiences, we also ask participants to perform a secondary identification task where they have to answer the question, does a bystander want to interact with you? If they thought so, they press a button on the controller to indicate someone wants to talk to me now. We pre-recorded pre several scenarios of bystanders. This video shows movements of bystanders from top view. In the identification task, we developed eight bystander scenarios. In the four of eight scenarios, a bystander will try to talk to the participants. As a baseline condition, we asked participants to experience the three VR contents with no visualization condition as well. Through these tasks, we found that avatar view could increase headset users' informal awareness than other cues. The presence plus plus could preserve immersion better than other cues, and the user interviews provided even more insight into participants' experiences. Participants found the avatar view disruptive and were uncomfortable with not knowing what was happening behind them. People like the radar widget, but it took time to understand Q, since users needed to remap the information to the physical world situation. It was also viewed as disruptive, with lots of bystanders or highly interactive VR content. When the participants used the Presence++ plus plus widget, Participants felt that easily and quickly notice the queue anytime and anywhere, and this is less disruption. However, it was difficult to identify when bystanders wanted to interact, since the amount of information was not enough for identification. Let's move on to discussion. Our exploration shows that each queue provides distinct benefits. So, we argue it might be useful to consider hybrid or contextual cues. For instance, Presence++ plus plus could provide a presence with less disruptiveness. So, when the collision risk is low and the possibility of needing to interact with bystanders is low, the Presence++ plus plus is a better solution. On the other hand, when the possibility of beginning communication is high, the avatar view is a better solution. Here, I'd like to give you a quick summary of what we've seen today. First, 
We proposed and prospect the three visualization cues by considering placement and presentation of the visualization cues. Second, we revealed the performance of each visualization cues and found that avatar view was good for awareness and presence plus plus was good to preserve immersion. Finally, we suggest that it may be useful to combine the visualization cues based on the situation to balance awareness and immersion. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much for your interesting presentation. So first of all, uh, do we have any questions from the people who are here with us? Okay, so maybe I will start with my first question. Um, again, thank you very much for your presentation. And do you think, uh, is it important to uh, be aware uh, in a little bit different way of objects and people who are in our surrounding and why it is so important to, to feel the difference between just an object and a person? Um, thank you for the question. Uh, do, you, do you hear me? Yes, okay. we can hear you. Okay. Uh, so I think uh, so uh, knowing the around the people and the object is both uh, important things but uh, so in our research uh, mm, so in, in this research we foc we focused on the um, the bystanders but uh, uh, so uh, so but uh, exploring how we should we uh, visualize the object uh, with res uh, this, this this direction is also important. So uh, we so uh, so as a next step. So we want to explore the both uh, bystander and the object. Okay, thank you very much for your answer. So, do we have more questions? Okay, so I heard that there are no questions also in chat. Yes, so please. Hi, thank you for your talk. Um, I have one question though. You seem to be only using visual awareness cues to make the, uh, the VR user aware of the bystanders. And I was wondering if you thought about using sound, which is already omnidirectional, um, or other modalities. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? Uh, yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you for the question. Uh, so, yeah, I was uh, uh, the considering other modalities like audio, haptics, and so on. But uh, so, but in in this research, we we focused on the visual cue because uh, uh, to uh, provide the, the location and orientation, the visual cue is uh, is the, the the easiest way. I thought so. Uh, we we so we to know the characteristics of the cues, we focus on the the. Uh, Visual cue, but uh, uh, yeah, we know. So, if the uh, uh, headset user miss the visualization cue, uh, the visualization cue doesn't work. In that case, the audio uh, can be a good way because the audio, uh, the headset user can hear the audio. Uh, uh, so whether the headset user move uh, uh, or not. Uh, so yeah, so, but so. Uh, combining merge modalities uh, is uh, complex, but uh, so now at this point we uh, could found the, the char characteristics of the visualization queue. So as a next, we we want to yeah explore the how can we uh, combine and uh, how can we design the the the, the total the performance queue. Okay, so thank you very much for your answer. Do we have more questions? Okay, so thank you very much again for your presentation. And again, big, uh, big applause. Yeah, thank you.